under a charter city, you do have the ability to not be required to pay prevailing wage uh, on the use of local general fund monies. Now, those are monies that are raised locally. They cannot be, if, they, if, if you are having any type of project that is in collaboration with state funding or federal funding, uh, it would not apply. But it does give you that opportunity to do that. The other item that is significant when it comes to a charter city is um, the design build standards that you have the opportunity to pursue. Uh, and this council is well aware, uh, following the public contracting bidding requirements, uh, we go out and do an RFP uh, and we receive bids and they're open in a public opening and, and, and we're generally required to take the lowest bid that we receive without much flexibility in determining whether that's actually the best use of the taxpayer's money. And I think this council and many cities uh, across the state have certainly seen that sometimes taking the absolute lowest bid actually ends up costing the taxpayer a significant amount of more money. Uh, and we've seen that here in the city. So those are the, the major criteria points for the idea of a charter city. Uh, it is what often is brought up is more local control. I, I think that's to some extent uh, a discussion that you can have. Uh, I think it's a question of uh, are locally as a city council and a city manager and a city staff, are we better uh, qualified, more capable of understanding the needs of our community that we represent that we see every day than the state of California uh, and the legislature? Well, we probably won't that, right? Do we have a budget? <coughs> well, I don't think we even have a state budget. The second item is uh, that we were asked to review was district elections. And then district elections are something that predominantly larger cities have gone to. Most uh, of the cities, over 200,000. Uh, throughout California have district elections. They're not at large, so they, they elect people from specific districts within the city. It is something that some cities in California have actually been forced to by court action in California. And the size of the city is not, has not been a criteria. It's been a criteria of diversity, representation throughout the community. And so we looked at uh, a list of cities that had district elections. We looked at pros and cons. Uh, we looked at the current and the, the previous diversity uh, that has been represented on this council and the city for the last, you know, four, five, six election cycles. We looked at our population uh, that we have and where we saw it going. Uh, and we looked at the number of candidates that are, have, been, have been running in, in recent elections. And, and whatnot, and came up with a recommendation on that. The third item that we uh, were asked to review was the idea of moving El Central City Council elections from odd years, which they currently are, uh, where we represent or elect two council representatives in, in, in an odd year, for instance, 2009, and then followed up in 2011 with uh, three. And one of the things that we looked at was uh, the idea of moving those council elections to even number of years. And, and the reason for that uh, is as we reviewed the turnout of the electorate in the odd number of years, uh, it averaged somewhere between 14 and maybe 25, 28 percent. If you look at the turnout over the last four or five elections in the city of El Centro, in which they are even number of years, and I should specify that even number of years uh, will either include a governor's election in California or a presidential election uh, in, in the alternative even year. Uh, and what we looked at in even number of years is you can look at a turnout of somewhere between 33, 35 percent all the way up as high. I don't know what the number was this time. I, we used 58 percent as the highest prior to this election. I think this current uh, election in 2008 was much significantly higher. I don't know if that will continue. Uh, the, the analysis of that showed obviously that we would in all likelihood double the turnout of people who would turn out and vote in council elections in the city. Uh, the negative um, would be that in an analysis with discussions with the county board of supervisors, the reason 
we had to discuss it with the supervisors is because it actually would take a approval of the Board of Supervisors to approve us changing our election date. I'm not quite sure, but that's the law. Um, we also looked into the cost factor. And although I cannot say we're honestly um, convinced, we were told by county staff that they estimated that it would cost the city somewhere between 30 and 40,000 additional dollars to conduct an election in an even number year as opposed to the current system. Um, I think more analysis should be done of that. I think the, the idea behind that is because they would have to produce more uh, sample ballots and more ballots and have more poll workers, uh, that the cost would increase. I, I think certainly an argument could be made that, that there's an economy of scale, and since we're consolidating with, with what already has to take place in regard to a state election and a presidential election, I'm not sure, but we use the numbers because that's the tentative number they gave. So that, that, that is an issue that, 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 that has to be addressed. Uh, the other part of, of this idea about changing from odd to even is that it will um, require the council to make the decision if it decided to go forward with that. It, will, um, it is a council decision. It not, does not require a board of people to change the election cycle. Um, it will require the council to decide to move forward in that into making a decision as to shortening election uh, cycle one time, our terms, or extending them one day. So you, in order to get on an even cycle, you'll either have to shorten them back all the council terms one year, or you'll have to extend them one year. Uh, in discussing that with the city attorney and him, him doing his review, either option is available under state law. You can move under state law an election cycle up to 12 months. So you can move it forward 12 months or you can move it back 12 months. And so that would be an issue. The fourth item that was discussed uh, was the idea concerning um, any change in how we select our man. And there's typically, in, in reviewing the way cities across the state do it, there's three ways that, that it's typically done. The first one is the way in which we, we currently select our mayor, which is a, a rotation basis uh, on an annual uh, at the reorganization meeting or, or uh, and either in a year when we have an election act or, or whatever, whatever we do to reorganization. Uh, the second way that it is, has been done and it's being done in many cities now is going to a two-year mayor cycle that is still selected by the council. And um, that is being used in a number of cities in Orange County and, and some in Ventura County. It's fairly new, um, but it's a way that, that um, members can have more continuality in their goals and, and focus. Uh, the fourth, I mean, the third concept, of course, is what many cities obviously do out, throughout the state do, which is have a direct elected mayor, uh, which would be a, uh, a council member, I mean, a, a position that would be elected as the mayor, and that would be a, a term of four years, and that would be directly, directly elected by uh, the, the, the public. And, and that would uh, in a scenario that way, as far as the city of Central would work in, in a way that you would have four council members and a mayor, we wouldn't expand the council uh, to you know five council members and a mayor or six council members and a mayor. We we'll just make one of the council members uh, mayor for four years elected by the people, and there would be four council members. And if if the council would have would 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 want to go down that path, one of its ideas consideration would would be the timing of that, because they think if, if that was the, the, the direction of the council, you would likely want to make sure that uh, the timing is such that you would end up with two council uh, members being elected every two years, and, and then the mayor every four years, uh, so that you don't end up with a situation where uh, in, in a, in a two-year cycle, where you have one council member in the mayor up and then three council members in the fall of that. So that will have to be taken into consideration if that's the direction of the council, or should be considered if the council wants to go in that direction. So uh, I'm gonna, that, that's a pretty much an overview of what the, uh, the issues that we discussed and how we looked at them. And I'm gonna go quickly through the recommendations. Uh, the task force recommended to the city do, or uh, the council recommends to the council that it does place uh, on the ballot, an idea to go to a charter city that does take action by the public uh, 